The birth of Phaeton was an event long awaited by both his mother Clymene and his father Apollo, the sun god. Phaeton's conception was said to be a gift from Zeus, who allowed Apollo to unite with Clymene to have a son. When the day of Phaeton's birth arrived, Clymene gave birth to a beautiful and healthy boy. From the moment he was born, he was said to have a defiant look and an impetuous spirit, suggesting that he was destined for great things. As the child grew up, his father Apollo began to notice in him a great ambition and a desire for knowledge and divine power. The young boy longed for the knowledge and experience that only his father, the sun god, could offer him. He was drawn to the power and brilliance of the sun and dreamed of one day driving the sun chariot across the sky. Ever since the boy had expressed his desire to drive the sun chariot, he could not stop thinking about it. He knew it was a dangerous and difficult challenge, but his curiosity and adventurous spirit kept him going. Finally, the day came when he decided to confront his father and ask him to grant him that wish. When Phaeton approached his father Apollo to ask him to allow him to drive the chariot of the sun, he did so with a mixture of anxiety and excitement. He knew his father was powerful and feared his reaction, but his desire to know the world and the experience of driving the chariot of the sun was stronger than his fear. Apollo was surprised to hear his son's request, but he was also proud of his ambition and determination. However, he knew that driving the chariot of the sun was a dangerous task that only the most powerful gods could perform. Despite this, he decided to grant his son's wish, albeit with some conditions. My dear son, Apollo said in a fatherly voice, driving the chariot of the sun is not an easy task. It requires great skill and experience to control the chariot horses and keep your balance in the sky. But if it is your wish, I will allow you to do it, as long as you follow my instructions and be careful. Phaeton was ecstatic by his father's response. He thanked him for his generosity and promised to be careful and follow all instructions. From that moment on, he devoted himself to learning all he could about driving the chariot of the sun preparing for the day when he would finally be allowed to make his dream come true. The days passed and the son of the sun trained hard, practicing on the ground and studying the stars and the sun's movements. His determination and dedication knew no bounds, and he was determined to be the best driver of the chariot of the sun that had ever existed. Finally, Apollo agreed to his beloved son's request. He gave him detailed instructions on how to drive the chariot of the sun, warning him of the dangers he would encounter along the way. You must be very careful, he told him. The horses of the sun are very powerful and can drag you down dangerous roads if you don't control them well. The boy nodded, taking his father's warnings to heart, but he could not hide his excitement. Finally, he had achieved his goal of meeting his father and driving the chariot of the sun. Apollo helped him up and handed him the reins. The horses of the sun were beautiful and powerful, with golden manes that shone in the sunlight. Phaeton had never seen such impressive animals, and he felt a shiver of excitement as the reins slipped through his hands. However, as soon as the chariot began to move, the inexperienced young man realized that driving it would not be as easy as he thought. The horses were restless and did not follow the straight path Apollo had described. Phaeton had to pull hard on the reins to try to control them, but the beasts were too strong. The chariot began to sway dangerously, and the young man struggled to keep his balance. The steeds of the sun pulled in all directions, and the chariot moved with an uncontrollable sway. The son of Apollo clung to the reins with all his might, but he knew he was losing the battle. Meanwhile, the gods on Olympus watched the scene with concern. They knew that the boy was in danger, and that something had to be done to avoid a catastrophe. Zeus decided to intervene and confront Apollo, demanding that he stop his son before he caused any more damage. The god was embarrassed by what had happened but also resisted the idea of fulminating his own son. Zeus, however, knew that he had to act with firmness and determination. He knew that the danger posed by Phaeton was too great to allow him to continue his attempt to drive the chariot of the sun, so he prepared to intervene directly. With a strong wave of his hand, Zeus hurled a bolt of lightning that struck the chariot, causing an explosion of fire and light. The boy was thrown into the air, 
stripped of his control of the chariot and control over the horses of the sun. He fell from a great height to earth as the wild horses of the sun ran away. The young man's body fell to the ground with a deafening noise, followed by a tremor that shook the earth and the sky. The gods and mortals watching the scene were petrified by the magnitude of the impact, while silence took over the atmosphere. Then, a piercing cry of pain and despair broke the silence. It was Apollo, who had watched in horror the fall of his son and now mourned his death. His sobs mingled with the wails of the other gods and mortals who had witnessed the tragedy. The sky darkened and the stars disappeared, as if to hide the terrible scene that had occurred. The sun hid behind the clouds and the light disappeared, leaving the world in overwhelming darkness. The earth trembled and opened up as if it wanted to swallow Phaeton's body and erase all traces of his existence. Mortals living near the impact site trembled with fear and clung to their loved ones, while the gods of Olympus looked at each other, not knowing how to react. Apollo could not help but feel great pain at the loss of his son. Even though he had accepted his responsibility for what had happened, he still felt guilty for having granted him the wish to drive his chariot without thinking of the consequences. She had lost not only her son but also a part of her own soul. But as time passed, Apollo began to realize the legacy his son had left behind. Phaeton had been brave and determined and had pursued knowledge and power with determination and passion. Although his attempt to drive the chariot of the sun had been a failure, his spirit had inspired other gods and mortals to seek knowledge and power wisely and responsibly. Apollo realized that his scion's death had not been in vain and that his legacy would live on forever. He became an advocate of humility and prudence and a mentor to those who sought knowledge and power. His teachings on the limits of divine power and the need to respect the dangers of ambition became an important legacy in Greek mythology. In addition, the constellation Auriga continued to shine in the night sky, reminding gods and mortals of the story of Phaeton and his legacy. The rivers that had suffered the consequences of his attempt to drive the chariot of the sun had become the rivers of the boy's tears, and his memory had been honored in other aspects of life on earth. The story of the son of Apollo and his driving the chariot of the sun became a legend in Greek culture and has been retold and reinterpreted over the centuries in literature, art, and music. The story of the son of the sun remains relevant in today's culture as it serves as a warning about ambition and recklessness in the pursuit of knowledge and power. The story of Phaeton also reminds us of the importance of prudence and wisdom in our actions and warns us about the dangers of ignoring the consequences of our actions. Thank you.